Okay, we're here to look at how to embark on double tonguing for the first time. Um, and you've worked out that this is going to be a more efficient way of playing faster um, and it's going to get you through some higher tempos that you're maybe hitting in your repertoire just now. Um, so hopefully you've watched the video about what double tonguing is and the whole concept of it so you understand the um, how your tongue is going to act and you'll know that we're going to use the syllables ticka 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 to use the front part of our tongue, the tip of our tongue and the middle part on the roof of our mouth to do this. So do make sure you've watched that video first before you do this. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is get this working on one note. Um, so we gather the strength um, first of all. So please spend a lot of your day uh, walking around your house, annoying your family, um, walking down the street going tick 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 and trying to continually get that action feeling as normal as possible. Remember, your tongue's just a muscle, so it will strengthen quickly and um, with a little bit of practice. So, or using a dit or a g, so you can do it either with your voice, or without the voice. Obviously, we'll be playing without our voice when we put our flutes up. So. Um, you've got that action working and getting stronger by the minute. The next thing we have to do is to make sure that the air supply is supporting our tonguing. And this is crucial. This is often the bit that people fall down straight away with um, because the tongue is working and yet stopping the air or the air's just not coming in the first place. So I would suggest what you do is you play a long note first and then try a little quick tick at the end. So just taking something, middle register is quite good for this if you feel happy with that. So here's a middle G. And just trying to get the sound through those articulations as well. Um, there's two ways of teaching double tonguing. One is to teach it as a reaction, which I really prefer and I feel it works better for most people, but sometimes they get stuck and then we work at strengthening the kiss syllable. But that's that's another way of doing it and maybe we'll do another video about that. Okay, once you feel like you've got that air moving, start to um, do a little, uh, a few more articulations on that. Just keep very, very mindful of where your tongue is working. Obviously, there's nothing to see. It's all in here. You can usually tell you might see a little bit of movement here. Um, you want to keep your tongue as free as possible and as light as possible. If you find that the air isn't coming out, you'll find that your notes will they'll stop in between. Keep blowing through, blowing through all the time, okay? Once you feel you're happy that you've got actual sound on that articulation, take out your long note now and just blow your semi-quavers. So that is four semi-quavers quaver if you like. And you're giving your tongue a little rest in between and making sure that you've got time to breathe so that you can really focus on getting that ear stream steady as well. I'm making these very, very short. You do want to spend quite a bit of time on each of these exercises until you hear exactly what you want to want to hear. The next issue with your double tonguing is to get your fingers coordinated. Um, and again, this is a place where we can come unstuck. Don't forget that your finger movement is always fast. Even if you're playing slow music, um, your finger lifts or goes down quickly because it's got to do it immediately. And you've got, when you're double tonguing, a nanosecond where that finger has got to move at the same time as your tongue. You'll already have some skill with this in your single tonguing because you'll have coordinated your single tonguing with your finger. You might not have thought that's what you're doing, but yes, you are. So take your um, semi quavers. little uh, combinations if you like but as long as you're moving your fingers and then if you put use D's and E's it becomes a little bit more complicated okay the next thing you want to do 
is to then start to push yourself with the amount of time you've got for your coordination. So that you're moving your fingers, um, you can go up the scale. So that you're just working these fingers together. Once you happily have that going, I would take a scale then. Playing four semiquavers, moving notes, four semiquavers each note. Then I would change to two. You'll find this will take a bit of time and remember to keep focusing on that airflow. If the airflow is not there, it's not going to have the tone to it. It's like a flag flapping in the wind. You know, it really needs something to support that. The more airflow it's got behind it, the more freely it'll move. Keep your tongue as relaxed as you can. Keep your throat nice and open. Two semiquares. And then once you feel happy with that, see if you can begin to coordinate. <laughs> and start to move your fingers and your tongue together. It's a long process. Some find it quicker than others. Keep working at it. Do it until your tongue's very tired. It'll feel like it's much bigger in your mouth or feels like it's a big piece of rubber or whatever. Rest. Play something smooth and lyrical. Come back to your tonguing. Work it hard. Rest. Play something smooth and lyrical. Back to work it. It's a muscle. It strengthens quickly. It tires quickly. So lots of rest periods, lots of hard work, you'll soon find you'll make good progress.